Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to our channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about ITDR, which stands for Identity Threat Detection and Response. Now, this video will be a small introduction in terms of what is ITDR, from where exactly this term came into the existence, and how you should implement it in your enterprise by using different solutions, or let's say by using solutions from one single OEM. Okay, now before I go ahead and talk about everything related to ITDR, let's just do a random search in terms of understanding this or looking for definition. Okay, so ITDR or Identity Threat Detection and Response is a cybersecurity discipline focused on protecting identities and identity based system from cyber threats. Okay, however, if I'll scroll down and show you, let's say, different articles by all these different OEMs, let's just see what every OEM has to say about ITDR. So, Identity Threat Detection and Response, as per CrowdStrike, is a cybersecurity framework. As per Microsoft, you can build your ITDR solution by using uh, the solutions which Microsoft has to offer. And Microsoft also says that develop an effective ITDR strategy. Now, when it comes to Proofpoint, they are kind of mentioning ITDR as a new class of cybersecurity solution itself. Okay. So you can clearly see that how each and every OEM is trying to create their own story or let's say project the idea of ITDR with different set of let's say keywords. Okay. Microsoft is saying it's a strategy. CrowdStrike is saying it's a framework. Proofpoint is saying it's a discipline. Now, the reason why I'm showing you all this, because that's the kind of feedback that I have got that our stories are typically Microsoft driven. So I don't want uh, that story narration to be limited to one single OEM itself. And it doesn't matter which OEM you're opting for, let's say a specific category of solution. Uh, the intent here is to make you understand how you can implement ITDR. Okay. Now, whenever I end up in these kind of scenarios, wherein instead of clarity, there is more confusion, I just ask one question that who has actually introduced this term or from where this term came into existence? And the answer is nothing new. It's, it's Gartner. So fundamentally, in 2022, yes, almost three years back, this term was introduced by Gartner. And then in 2023, early adoption started for ITDR. Okay. And last year, it was a major task for, let's say, all of uh, the enterprises, wherein this keyword or this, uh, let's say, solutioning was taking a lot more attention. And now, fundamentally, I have already shown you, you know, the articles from different OEMs, everybody is now imposing that you should go ahead and implement ITDR. You should go ahead and make sure everything is getting correlated from an identity standpoint perspective. Okay. But still, I mean, we have almost changed four or five slides. Still, ITDR definition is not clear. Okay. So now let's just hear it uh, from uh, the vendor who has introduced this term. Okay. So and again, this was something which was announced in 2022, wherein identity threat detection and response is the collection of tools and best practices to defend identity systems. This is how Gartner introduced the term identity threat detection and response. So fundamentally, ITDR is a collection of tools and best practices that are defined to protect identities and identity system. You can have multiple solutions, multiple identity security solutions for different identity types, but then in a nutshell, you have to make sure everything is protected. Okay. Now let's talk about how ITDR can be implemented. The very first question that you should ask is how many types of identities exist in your enterprise fundamentally. Okay. Now, in majority of the enterprise, the answer will be on-prem identities, hybrid identities, and cloud identities. And then the next thing that you have to make sure that the security controls are in place for all these three type of identities which exist. Now, when I say security control, I fundamentally mean the list of all the typical security controls which are defined for identity are 
digital state that MFA should be enabled, RBAC should be there, PIM should be there, PAM should be there, whatever is there. From an identity standpoint, you have to make sure that these set of controls are constant across these different identity types. Now, in majority of enterprises, uh, the possibility is that you may be using two different solutions to handle these kind of scenarios because there is absolutely no single solution which can help you protect everything okay and fundamentally depending upon how enterprises grow you may end up having multiple solutions and that's a fact it cannot be changed okay but still you have to make sure that there is some kind of correlation which is happening between these two solutions which means that if there is something fishy happening let's say in on-prem environment for a specific identity okay that can be correlated with the insights that you are getting from cloud activities. I'm just giving you an example. That's it. Now, the other scenario can be that for all these three different identity types, you let's say have different solutions. Okay. Now, this scenario is rare. That's I I have kind of seen this only with let's say two, three large enterprises, but fundamentally. It doesn't matter how many identity security solutions you have, you have to make sure that there is some correlation which is happening. Now, this correlation that I was referring to was related to identity layer itself. But then whether the insights from identity can be correlated with other digital states as well. For example, anything happening uh, with a specific account, okay, let's say in your cloud or in your on-prem environment. But then there was a specific endpoint which was being used by that particular user. And in that particular endpoint, a malware is detected. So whether that can be correlated. I mean, I'm just giving you some real time examples. Okay. Now, if you have these kind of scenarios, or let's say if you have these kind of practices in place, then fundamentally you have ITDR. Okay. Now let's talk about how ITDR can be implemented with Microsoft solutions. Okay. The very first thing is again you need and that is making sure the on-prem part is protected to begin with because that's where everything gets started right so you need to implement microsoft defender for identity which is typically there to kind of observe everything that's happening in your on-prem environment with the help of sensors cloud service and whatnot okay and recently with the help of microsoft defender cloud apps the insights from your other identity provider can also be correlated then you have Microsoft Entry ID, fundamentally speaking, wherein itself, I mean, if I talk about this particular solution, offers you n number of different capabilities, which are kind of, let's say, first set of controls that you should implement from an identity security standpoint, right? Conditional access, which is fundamentally attribute-based access control, right? Then you have PIM, you have identity governance, permission management, RBAC. Then if I talk about Microsoft Entra Identity Protection, which is something uh, you can say which is more refined or let's say which is more tilted towards uh, monitoring the behavior or let's say dark web insights. For example, if there is any user account that is compromised in your environment and the credentials are available in dark web, right? Then fundamentally with, from Microsoft Entra Identity Protection, you can impose a password reset. And then lastly, Microsoft Defender XDR. I mean, this is where every insight coming from every Defender solution, which Microsoft has to offer gets correlated and you have an end to end story of everything. And that's the reason why if you go back and see how Microsoft is saying that you should develop your ITDR solution is fundamentally the combination of these four solutions. Okay. I'll share this link in the description. You can go ahead and read it and it will give you a lot more insight. So fundamentally, if you have all these solutions, then it is something with which you can have kind of enhanced security posture available for your enterprise because every solution has its own purpose and the kind of detections uh, which a solution is highlighting is based on the information which is captured or generated by that particular solution. So if I talk about Microsoft Entra ID, I mean sign in logs and audit logs are captured just to see if there is anything fishy happening in your environment. Then from an Entra identity protection perspective, it's an advanced layer of protection that you're applying. For example, if a user is trying to sign in from Tor browser, I'm just giving an example and if that particular user is enabled for identity protection that sign in attempt will be blocked right 
Now, Defender for Identity, continuously monitoring everything that's happening in your on-prem environment for your ADCS, ADDS, ADFS, and Android Connect servers. And lastly, the correlation is happening in XDR. So if you have all these solutions from Microsoft, then it's a kind of end-to-end -end collated story, which Microsoft is trying to create from an identity security standpoint, okay? Now, if you have logged on to, let's say recently to security.microsoft.com, and if you go to the ITDR dashboard section, this is how it shows you everything, a kind of summary of on-prem identities, hybrid identities, and cloud identities. Let me quickly show you this in the browser itself, and then things will make a lot more sense, okay? So here I'm signed into security.microsoft.com, and you can see this is my ITDR dashboard, which is kind of telling me what is missing in my environment. And it's not only about making sure the identities are protected. In fact, this particular section, or let's say the security portal itself, will give me the insights in terms of the controls that should exist in my environment, making sure the identities as well as the identity systems are secured. So this was all about knowing what is ITDR, which is basically a collection of solutions that you have and the intent is to protect identity and identity based system. Now, I've created this video to get started with Microsoft Defender for Identity because fundamentally we have not covered this particular solution yet. And now I hope it gives you a clarity that why you need Microsoft Defender for Identity to begin with when it comes to on-prem security. So if you think that this channel is helping you to learn anything new, please feel free to subscribe and share this video with your technical community. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time.